Hello, my name's Richard. And my name's Aaron. And this is We're Not Wizards. This is a repeat offenders edition. And all that means is that we get somebody wonderful back on the show that we've spoken to before. So this evening we have got, as you've heard, we've got Aaron West from Elsra Games. Because um, we're going to have a little chat about the what's been happening with Catacombs and Castles. Uh, the Kickstarter and that, and then what is going to be happening with the next game coming up, which is Con Conquest. Am I correct? Or right. <laughs> Good. I was like racking my brains for a second just to make sure that I'd actually got that right. Um, first of all, how are, how are you doing? <laughs> well, it seems surreal to me that I'm sitting here and the thing isn't on a store shelf at this point. Yeah, uh, We're continuing to uh, do our best to um, get it moving, get it loaded, and get it delivered to everybody. So that's where we're at at the moment. Because, I mean, there's a couple of things have kind of cropped up. Do you want to talk about that or do you want to skip over it? Because you're probably sick of having no, no, read I can... the same. I mean, maybe you've seen no, all no, the. Not at all. Yeah. I think it's a good op- opportunity to explain to people yeah. uh, what happened. They can hear it actually in my own my own words. Yeah. Uh, as I always uh, stay consistent about this um, issue, it, it was really uh, three three things. The, the first was uh, my responsibility, and that was last year, uh, owing to the number of Catacombs and Castles backers that also elected to um, add Catacombs Third Edition to their uh, to their uh, re- reward levels. I felt an additional responsibility to really ensure that Catacombs 3rd Edition was as, as the reprint was as good as it could possibly be. Mm-hmm. And I deliberately took some additional time to work with the printer so that they really understood the product and we could make some of the refinements to it that I felt that it would benefit from. Mm-hmm. That was the first thing. The second thing in doing that was... I worked really hard to uh, have everything ready before the early Chinese New Year. And we knew that Chinese New Year was very early. And uh, despite working all through Christmas, we just simply couldn't make it happen. Um, The Chinese team had started to decamp for uh, uh, their Chinese New Year uh, holidays shortly after um, our Western New Year. Yeah, And uh, it, it just... It just wasn't feasible to to finish, but it was the biggest issue um, in in this production was actually nothing to do with us at all. Um, we, I don't have a lot of detail about exactly what happened here, but uh, the, the the printer that we're working with he's got an, an excellent reputation uh, in the industry. Um, he's uh, was the one responsible for. Uh, delivering Gloomhaven, which is probably the most complicated <laughs> and heavy board game ever created by my colleague in the industry, uh, Isaac Childress. And um, so I was confident in, and, and remain confident in, in that choice uh, in choosing uh, him and, and his team. And he had a well-vetted uh, wood component supplier that he had, he had used uh, uh, on several jobs in China. And these people just completely dropped the ball. Uh, they appear to have deliberately manipulated our quality assurance team about their progress. Yeah. So it's difficult when you visit a factory to know it to what to see what they've done. So things are made first to a bulk state, and uh, that just means to say that you'll see several bins of of what is reported to be finished product, yeah. but none of it's painted. So you don't know exactly what the quantities are of each of the, of each of the painted components that are required to uh, assemble a single finished game. And they, the, the quality assurance team over there started to get concerned that, that they were falling behind in, in terms of the production schedule that they had committed to. Because understand, we knew that... Uh, the production of the wood components is the element that 
can take the longest. So we had submitted that order uh, back in 2016. And um, while we were working on re refining some of the, the printed material. And it turns out that um, despite repeated visits to the factory, so we had people actually go there. We weren't just taking yeah. their word for it. Yeah. Um, they would they would say sort of in effect, yeah, 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 we're working on it. But as soon as we left, in a sense, they went back to doing some other order that they perhaps had received. So all very disappointing. Yeah. And it required us to bring in another factory. And this is a factory that does more in the way of game components because there's different factories and they all have different uh, specialties and they all fit into the supply chain in, in different ways. This one um, had, had a very good reputation as well um, and was one of, that they have used several times in the past and uh, they immediately got to work and managed to finish everything but of course there was a, a lot of perceived delay as a result because you can't mix the output of the two factories. Even though they're using the same wood yeah. and it comes from the same tree yeah. native to China, yeah. the the paint is going to be slightly different. So it becomes difficult to, um, to, to match that precisely. So they'll, they'll hit it within a, a reasonable tolerance, but customer has the potential to still see some some differences so you don't want them looking at what is what we report as a blue disc yeah. and then they they see a, two slightly different shades of blue well that doesn't that doesn't look very good obviously no, no. so at this point my understanding is and remember i'm not there i'm just receiving the reports from the factory my understanding is is that the, the, for this particular printing they've elected to use the wood that was produced by the second factory. Right. So it's all consistent. And um, my understanding is at this point is that it's all complete. So that, that factory has, uh, as, of, as of now, is, is finished. So it's a case of just shipping it over, which is what we're doing. Yeah. So that it r arrives at the, the printing factory for final assembly. So this is what the the, the teams are, are are putting it through right now. Right. So to that final assembly process. And I would think for many of the products now, uh, that's complete. Most of them were supposed to be ready by uh, the end of June. So we're there now. So it's they're they're all there and they're just in the process of packing them at the factory door yeah. to ship them out. So they, and this is how we're just confirming the different numbers to go to the different shipping regions. Yeah, because now what you've got to do is you've got to divide, you've got to divide everything up and make sure it's going on different containers and so it's going to different ports and I guess make sure that you're putting together um, all the kind of the Wyvern. Is it Wyvern, is Wyvern's layer going with that as well or is that a different batch? No, no, that's that was all completed at the time at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, owing to that delay, yeah. uh, we weren't sitting around doing nothing. We were able to finish the uh, Wyverns product. Uh -huh. That's all done now, too. Uh -huh. And, of course, we've been working on some other games in the background, and we have the uh, the Catacombs Conquest um, game in, in great shape as well. So my understanding is all of its wood components are pretty much finished, too. Mm -hmm. And we're already in the stage of proofing that in terms of the printed side of it so how did that make you i mean when you found out about the components how how were you feeling did you did you do a lot of did you do a lot of yoga that week to maintain <laughs> maintain some calm or were you just like well it is what it is i just have to dive in and see what happens i think it was a it is what it is uh, getting angry and frustrated doesn't solve a problem it's it i, I had to express my frustration to the printer representative to say, like, look it, please do everything that you can yeah. to keep this thing on track. And by the way, he's been very apologetic. Uh, you know, he's he's suffered some damage to his reputation in this regard as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, he, uh, he he's he's doing his very best to 
to help us out and really wants to maintain um, Elsra as a customer. Mm. And of course, he's never going to use that one wood factory ever again. No. Like they're done. No. Like they're they com- they've they've lost the business permanently. So yeah. um, going forward, he'll never he'll never use them again. Does that cost you money then? I mean, is you know having to switch from one factory to another did that leave you kind of out of pocket with the, the stuff, the other stuff that the guys, other guys said that they did or didn't do what they did? Is that kind of well thing? to the printers to the printers' credit? Yeah. Um, uh, he's he's picking up the cost for us on that. Wow. So he re- he recognizes that, uh, um, you know, this was this was his mistake, yeah. and uh, so this is if it was our responsibility, I would be sitting here telling you this was our responsibility and yeah. not looking to, as we say, pass the buck. But uh, no, it the, the printer is taking responsibility for this, and but no, it's not. It, we're not out of pocket as a result. <laughs> um, he's. Uh, he recognizes the the problem that we we had here, and it was it was out of our control. Well, you're a calmer man than me, Aaron, because I get you know I end up flipping a table if I lose at Mysterium or something like that. So <laughs> you, <laughs> know, you, know, you kind of manage to keep your inner peace and everything. No, I mean I can understand. I mean you you can't. They'll be angry and they'll be shouting, and then they'll be well. You know I might need to work with these guys again. So. As long as he can get it sorted out, then that's fine. And I guess you know it's an embarrass it's an embarrassment type of thing because, you know, these this is all best in reputation, isn't it? So it's going to be the that's case right. of yeah. you know board game designers speak to each other. Everybody knows that. So it's a case of well, did you use this company? And it's like well, yeah, I did. But you got to watch out. So this guy will be he'll be probably double super careful. The next time he's kind of ordering kind of wooden components, um, have but we have a good relationship, so it's uh, w- there wasn't any shouting matches between him and I or anything no. like that. Uh, we have a good we have a good working relationship, and he's uh, he the it was almost an un- in a sense an unavoidable problem because they manipulated his team too. Yeah. So we've just uh, worked together to. Uh, do our very very best to to solve a difficult problem as quickly and efficiently as as we can. Yeah, I mean, what's the um, what's the feedback been like from the from the backers? Have you had a lot of people coming back? I, I've not noticed really a massive amount of kind of bad feeling or anything from. I think I've, there's been a lot, quite a bit of understanding. But I mean, how have you found it? Have you found things a, a People have been disappointed, or have people been quite supportive and accepting of the situation? I, th- I think so. Yeah, that's the general sense that I get. They've been mm-hmm. very patient, very supportive, very understanding. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, they would like to get the game. Yeah, we would like to get them the game. Yeah, uh, of course, we would like to get it uh, all uh, off the dock, so to speak, um, and and into people's hands so that they can play it. Um, but I think what's helped, I'd like to think anyway, is that we've been very transparent in our uh, feedback to them. We've kept them um, involved and informed about the, the the good news and the bad. Yeah. And um, you know, that's I think that's really the the, the key point: keep people informed, be transparent. Yeah. Um, you know, and just be honest with them about. Uh, where things stand. I mean, for you, has this? Have you continued to have to work away and still do the kind of the long hours that you know you've commented on doing? I mean, have you have you now been almost kind of running this campaign solidly without a break now for a long time? I mean, does it feel like that? Um, oh, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'm working really hard every day. There's no question about it. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the in terms of then for conquest? With has this kind of put you off kind of launching conquest? Are you going to wait until the backers for catacombs and castles get their stuff through before you launch conquest? Are you going to go ahead and put conquest kind of out there? Well, I. I've been promoting the the date of July 2017 sometime, yeah. and um, I think at this point I'll probably just go ahead and launch it. Yeah. And the 
the reason for that is is that um, we're we're running out of launch windows for this year yeah. for new campaigns. So of course it would be best that people get um, this uh, catacombs and castles uh, first. We're hoping by the time that we do launch the conquest campaign that some people will have received them. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but I'm hoping that our backers are understanding enough that, um, that they will, uh, support us again here, um, before, um, in, in some cases before they will have received their main, uh, catacombs and, and, and castles order. And what'll be different about this campaign is that I'm deliberately keeping it very, very simple. So the design and development is finished. Yeah. Um, the we're already proofing the product with the printer. Uh, the wood components, a source of significant delay yeah. with our last campaign, is already completed. And there's only going to be the one product that you can back for. Uh, there's Catacombs Conquest. Yeah. And then there's Catacombs Conquest with an optional playmat. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And 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 that's it. Yeah. There isn't there isn't going to be the opportunity to order any of the other products in this campaign. It's just those just those elements, and I've priced them to be very affordable, and um, so there's a there's a good value there, I think, in terms of the pricing that we've put on it. And I'm hoping that people say, okay, yeah, this guy's been straightforward and honest with us. He's obviously working hard to get catacombs and castles into our hands. There's some logist. It, the, the thing is complete. It's finished. Yeah. It's not vaporware. It's sitting in a factory in China at the moment. Yeah. All it has to do is be loaded on a container and I'm going to get it. So it's not a question of whether I'm going to get it or not. I am going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, there's no, like, I'll do whatever it takes that every single backer that backed the campaign gets their game. That's the kind of person I am. Uh, but I'm hoping that they understand that we're running out of room here in the calendar year to, um, to launch some, an additional campaign to, to get some other products into the marketplace. Cause I, I made it very deliberate decision not to launch a, a campaign around the wyverns set for example yeah yeah i said well let's launch let's make that available directly to retail and then listening to some of our backers we also made it available as part of the catacombs and and castles campaign for those folks that were interested in that but um this conquest one is it, it isn't directly compatible with any of the previous catacombs titles no uh, but it's designed as an it, to, around our system as an entry level um, uh, experience, and I'm hoping that, uh, that 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 people will be understanding and will and will uh, show up to support us with it. It's, um, I mean, it's you've you got you have you've got costs here on how much. So what what what's the basics? What's the basic set going to cost people? At the moment, I've got it set at uh, twenty-four dollars Canadian. That's nothing. <laughs> once you do, yeah, the, I know. You do the conversion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is the uh, what is that in US at the moment? Let's see. It's probably about twenty, uh, twenty-two, twenty-one. Mm, maybe last uh, eighteen, eighteen fifty. Eighty or eighteen fifty. Okay, Captain conversion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, according to xc.com. Oh, okay, right. So you didn't convert a junior head, so you cheated, which is fine. Yeah. Um, which so that makes that probably about sixteen pounds. Do you want me to do the currency conversion? No, I don't. I, you could do. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. I... Drum roll. I'll do a drum roll. No, fourteen pounds. Wow, fourteen pounds. Let's. I mean, let's be honest. See, once you go out and you get, like, say, a Chinese meal, you get yourself a bottle of cola, you put Netflix on. I mean, you're into £15 territory just there to begin with. So 
So what? What's right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's ridiculously. So fourteen yeah. pounds plus plus shipping, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah. maybe twenty some quid, something like that. That's cool. Have... Something like that, I would think. I mean, I, I'm, I'm. That's a, a number that comes that's just totally off the cuff. I have no idea what the shipping would look like, but yeah. um, it's going to be under two kilograms, which is the magic number, right? The magic yeah, weight is two want. kilograms. Yeah, 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 yeah. When it's under two kilograms, um, you can things become a lot more affordable. So, so yeah. So it's. Uh, I'm. I'm setting it up so that it's. So that. So that. So that price isn't an issue when it comes to uh, uh to backing it. Now of course that doesn't include the the mat. No. Um but um so what are we looking at if we include the mat? Um twenty eight dollars you said I think you've got on the mat. Yeah, that's right. So I put them together at fifty dollars Canadian. So that's basically that? just under twenty uh, that's twenty nine sixty British pounds. That's and that, that that gets you the the core game mm-hmm. and the optional mat together, and then of course plus shipping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that's pretty affordable. I mean, most of the time these play mats, uh, they go for about twenty dollars US for this st- size. That oh we're yeah, using. yeah. We're I mean, using a you, very yeah. standard size. They're about twenty dollars. Yeah. Um, and um, we'll be we'll be going with the, the two millimeter thickness which is the sort of standard thickness for them as well Mm -hmm. so it and the art by the way for that is all complete too so i've just been told that um to produce the mats is about 30 days so we're in the process of getting the um the 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 die lines together for that so that we can get the artwork officially mounted and and get that in production so my, my intention is is that everything be in production while we're doing the campaign, so is that so it's literally it's literally being printed while we're doing the campaign. Is that Quan Chai doing the art again? Yep, yeah, he did the art, and he did this lovely picture of this beaver. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The yeah, the ice, ice beaver. beaver. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is yep. is the ice beaver appearing in the game? It may. <laughs> just just teasing us, Mister West. Come on. <laughs> It may, it may not. It's in the uh, it, at at the moment it isn't in the core game because it wasn't uh, it wasn't ready. All right, okay. Uh, in time for that, well, that's but fine. It might it might show up in one of the stretch goals or something. Yeah. So we could put him in for that potentially. Yeah. Be being quite a it's quite a realistically but lowish kind of funding level as well. Um, I mean, this is all in the preview, so anybody that's you know has got access to the preview stuff will see that. I think you're going for like ten thousand, right? Yep. Is that just a placement as well? Is that just a place marker? Is that what you're going to be? Looking yeah, that's at? a that's a placeholder at the moment. Yeah. I haven't uh, I haven't looked at that number in in detail yet because in some cases some of the quotations, like for the mat, for example, they just arrived at the office, so oh, right. like literally a couple of days ago. So okay. I would want I'll probably review that. I would think, um, but yeah, it, it's. That that's that's safely a placeholder at this point. That's pretty cool. Okay, well that okay, well we'll we shall wait and see kind of what happens. For people that maybe didn't listen to the last episode, and it might be the case just because we have got quite a few new listeners kind of turning up on our doorstep. So hello, new listeners. Um, do you want to give a quick rundown again over what conquest is going to be about? How it's going to work? you know, um, just to give us a brief kind of overview of it. Sure. And I think in doing that, I'm going to break it into two parts. So the first part I'd like to talk about is the backstory. Okay. And where it fits in terms of the overall catacombs narrative that I'm putting together. Mm-hmm. And then I'll talk a bit about the, the gameplay side of it. Okay. So the the backstory is that it takes place uh, in the future, so we're moving forward in time now, and there's some elements of this story that have been hinted at in Catacombs and Castles. So it, it's not an accident, for example, in Catacombs and Castles, that there are robots that appear uh, in both in the defense of the castle and 
on the uh, the side of the the race knights. Okay, yeah. And so I, there's a there's a site where some of this alien technology uh, was uncovered. Okay, so it's it's this remnants of this other civilization that occupied some uh, sites uh, in this this world that we have Mm -hmm. and there's part of the story is is that they ultimately come back again okay and so in the future where we there was an event that occurred called the event horizon that fundamentally changes the world completely and this game takes place after that event and it so the the world now has completely changed yeah and it focuses on the witch um lenore who um is now remembering and dreaming about some of those heroes and champions from the past Okay, so these are the heroes and champions that we know about from, say, Catacombs yeah. Third Edition yeah. and Catacombs and Castles. So she remembers them, and as a result of that process, because she's alone at the moment, she's she's isolated mm-hmm. because of this transformation that's that's happened, and these characters now appear within the event horizon itself. So they appear inside of it, and this, the it's called Catacombs Conquest, not because they're necessarily fighting each other. Yeah. What it is that they're doing is that they're being given the opportunity to revisit their lives and, in a sense, conquer their own fears and insecurities. All right, okay. And to, and to recognize that there's the potential here for reconciliation and ultimately forgiveness between these these very, very different people. Okay? So it's a way for this sort of sword team and skull team, this is how we put them in, in, in gameplay terms, but really they're, they're one and the same, and it allows them to, to all come together uh, in, 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 this, in this sort of imagined collectively imagined world and that's how the the map for example shows this it's got the it sort of harkens back to the the sort of the teleport card from catacombs third edition because it's designed to have this very surreal kind of look to it because it the the action itself is taking place uh inside of the event horizon now of course my challenge is is to distill all of this down to a few sentences <laughs> for the backstory for the manual, so that people actually understand oh, what I'm getting yeah. at. Um, because the Wyvern story, for example, it's it's quite it's quite long, and I had some of my reviewers and editors come back to me and say, "Well, Aaron, you don't this is this is pretty dense here. Uh, you know, isn't it just sort of a a story about some people just sort of like fiddling around with." on the backs of wyverns, isn't that good enough? Um, but I said, no, no, let's, I want to sort of give them a bit more, and they can always skip it if they want. Yeah, no, you don't, don't have to read, you know. If you don't like the story, then just skip yeah. it. But anyway, that's that's what I'm going for with, with, with Catacombs Conquest. That's sort of the, um, you know, I've never, I haven't obviously shared this publicly before, but this is, this is the, uh, this is the premise behind it. Um, uh, so it, uh, this this is one of the things I'm working on finishing for the for the for the manual uh-huh, uh-huh. is is the is this little backstory section that it, that explains explains all of this. So that's the that's the backstory for those folks that are interested in that sort of thing. Um, but the 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 gameplay itself is um, designed to be very uh, straightforward but strategic, and it can be summarized as follows. I have my cards, okay? Yeah. And my cards tell me and inform what I can do. So I play a card, and in playing a card, 
I execute a dexterity sequence. Okay, so if I choose, for example, the huntress, I've, she's got a sequence that she can perform, and she's part of the sword team. So I'd be using one of my sword team disc. Yeah. To execute that sequence on behalf of the huntress card. Okay. Okay. And then I get to move or flick one of the obstacle discs that are on the board. Because in this game, the obstacles can be moved around. So in Catacombs 3rd Edition, the obstacles are fixed in the board. Yeah. And it kind of becomes like a pinball type experience. Yeah. Both. I change the board. Yeah. I change the configuration uh -huh. of the obstacles. In Catacombs and Castles, <clears throat> there are no fixed locations yeah. that are drilled into the board, so to speak. There's different icons. Uh -huh. And at the beginning of the game, we set up the orientation and position of all of the obstacles for that particular game. And they remain in place. And when we want to play again, we can put the obstacles in different orientations and positions according to the icons on, on the board. Yeah. And of course, the, there's different sets of icons on both sides. So in Catacombs Conquest, the idea is, is that you can move the obstacles around. And th there's all sorts of strategic possibilities that em emerge as, as, as a result of that. You can, so. I was going to say you can really mess up somebody's day, <laughs> basically. And that's the idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you can really think of those obstacles as being, in a sense, like a bonus rush shot that you're always getting to execute. Yeah. So when I play my card, I'm using there's a there's a there's a turn tracker token that indicates what character is going to be able to move. So those they're double sided. So there's on the sword team, for example, it's green and purple, and on the skull team, it's blue and gray. So if I'm if the turn tracker indicates green. It means to say myself as the player in a two-player game, I know it's my green, my green character disc that that uh, is the one that has to move, that I that I'm playing the card on its behalf. Yeah, yeah. And that means to say my opponent doesn't have to worry about my purple character disc. No. So it it they will worry about them when it's when they know that the it, it's the purple character's uh, turn because the final step after I've moved an obstacle, is to flip my turn tracker over. So to review, I'm playing a card. I'm executing that card's uh, sequence as, as part of that. I'm moving an obstacle disc, and then I'm flipping over the turn tracker marker. And that's the game. That's very quick. But Very quick. But out of that emerges a lot of different strategic possibilities as a result of what card I'm playing, when, because the cards also have special abilities on them. So the, the abilities allow me to capture life, heal life, for example, stun the other player. So we keep the number of dexterity system icons to a minimum in this game, and some of the mechanics that people would be familiar with from Catacombs 3rd Edition, for example, end up being rendered as abilities, so that people can just read it right on the card how they work. And of course, there's new um, new things too, but uh, it's kind of a mix of the of the two um, different uh, different styles in a sense. Yeah, because the fundamental difference seems to be between this and say Catacombs Third Edition was that when you were playing Catacombs Third Edition, you started off with a particular character, and then you were generally using the same character all the set all the time. But That's right. it sounds in Conquest that you have a generic marker that they, you, you then assign kind of properties for that marker to take on in terms of its attack and skills and how often it moves and stuff like that, yeah? No, that's exactly correct, okay, yeah. Cool. And, the, and the other big difference, of course, between this title and Catacombs 3rd Edition is that it doesn't require an overseer or dungeon master type no, player. No, no. Uh, it's fully, it's fully symmetric, so um, it's very, very easy for people to uh, to pick it up and to and, and and to play with it. Have you aimed this to be? I mean, <clears throat> one of the things we, me and Colin, spoke about when we spoke about catacombs originally was the ease of which it is for basically somebody of any age to come along and, 
and pick it up and play it and understand it because of the dexterity element. It sounds like you're kind of keeping in the same kind of vein that Catacombs Conquest is going to be as equally, if not more, accessible than maybe Catacombs 3rd Edition was. It'll definitely be more accessible. Yeah. Um, it, it'll be much, much easier to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything is that you can do is expressed on the cards that you have in front of you in your hand, and that's it. So if I draw my five cards, for example, well, four cards technically, and then I get one at the beginning of my turn, mm-hmm. uh, I've got my five cards, and that that determines what I can do. And there's mechanics where potentially I can be playing additional cards, yeah. um, you know, during the course of my 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 turn. Um, but yeah, it's those cards are what I can do, and that's it. So, how do you go about keeping it simple? How do you go about playtesting this? Because, um, is there, do you do you have a group of playtesters that you send send this out to? Do you go to like local? board game clubs, cafes, stuff like that? Or is there a select team that you always go to in terms of letting them kind of go through the rules and things? It's a bit of uh, a bit of all of those things, I would say. Um, certainly there are some Kickstarter backers, for example, that are very, very interested and very enthusiastic about what we're doing. And we're very fortunate for that enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. And they give us a lot of uh, uh, feedback um, based on their own experiences uh, with our games yeah Uh, because in some cases some of our core backers for example they've played my games much much more even than i have (laughs) believe it or not so i mean they're running tournaments all the time they're 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 just always uh, front and center in their lives so to speak which is wonderful um so i listen very carefully to to their feedback to understand what works and what doesn't uh, but yeah, there are local uh, game cafes that, uh, that that we do go to and um, and so- solicit uh, feedback from. Uh, you know, groups of players there. Conventions, another um, possibility. For example, I hope to have a uh, some sessions at uh, this coming week at Dice Tower Con with Catacombs Conquest. Oh, right, if I can okay. Find some folks that are interested in in playing it. I'm I'm planning to bring the prototype with me. And people can can see how it works. Are you having? Are you going to have a stall there, a stand? Are you um, are you just going to turn up and see if who is going to play? No, we're exhibiting at Dice Tower Con. Oh, cool. Okay. Do you have we? And where whereabouts is that going to be? That's in uh, Orlando, Florida. All right. Okay. That'll be a nice little um, nice little trip. Mm-hmm. Is it a nice little trip? I mean, I don't know how easy it is to fly. Um, I don't know. It could be like thirteen transfers, and you end up get like spending twenty seven hours flying or something like that. But I think it's quite no, no, nothing like that. <laughs> it's about two hours, and it's a direct flight. Oh, that's okay then. No problem at all. That's fine. That's fine. Cool. Um, do you have a stand number then? Have you got that allocated to you and things like that? Uh, yeah, but I couldn't tell you what it was. <laughs> um, there. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's. I, they they sent around the exhibitor mat, uh-huh. um, or so not mat. I'm thinking play mats. No <laughs> map. The exhibitor map. Um, it's out there, but it isn't. There isn't like a lot of um, a, a large number of exhibitors at that particular show, yeah. so it should be pretty easy to uh, to find us. Cool. Okay. Is there going to be a lot of other kind of um, relatively well known designers such as yourself going to be pitching up there as well? I would assume so. Yeah, I'm not sure. Probably. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay. And how long is it for? It runs from Wednesday to Sunday. Wow. That's that's um, that's a long day demonstrating. That's um, if especially if it's going to be solid days. The gaming expo in the UK usually opens its doors very very early, but then continues actually late into the night. So will you be doing the same thing? Is it? Are you looking at kind of like ten, eleven? Our days, if not longer for that, or are you going to have some help along with you as well? Well, my brother's coming with me, so that's uh, always beneficial. Um, He'll give me a hand. Um, I think if I remember correctly, the hours for the exhibit hall are usually 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
5 or 6 p.m., something like that. All right, that's good. Uh, they do keep the gaming hall open. Yeah. Because it's in one big room, and they may have expanded into some other rooms this year, I'm not sure. But last year it was in one big room. Okay. And then there was like one section of the room that where they had the exhibitors, and then that section closes at the end of the day, and then people can keep uh, can keep playing. Okay, okay. Have you... Um been playing anything else yourself at all? Have you had time or has the thought of picking up any other cardboard kind of been a bit bleh at the moment? I've not had the opportunity to play an awful lot of games yeah. recently. Having said that, um, I'm thinking about the ones that I've tried. Um, I did play Great Western Trail a couple of times. Yes. Uh, so that was uh, quite uh, enjoyable. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, none that are immediately jumping to mind. I know we played that one. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't had an awful lot of an awful lot of time uh, recently to to really play many games. Really, I would say. I'm sure you've but, had um, uh, you've had more pressing matters. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, no, I did. That, that was the one. That's the one that jumps to mind that yeah. um, that I did have the opportunity to play yeah. a couple of times. Yeah. No. Um, no. Um, no. Are you? I mean, are you looking for? Have you got a time in the diary to actually have a break and then just sit down and not have kind of anything connected with anything to do with tabletop or board gaming? Is there a date in the diary that you're looking forward to? You can just sit down and go, right, I'm going to do nothing. Uh, not really. <laughs> you're going to continue? Um, not really, because <clears throat> I want to push forward with some of the other ideas that uh, that I have. Yeah. So I can talk a bit about those if you Yeah, because last them. time we spoke about the, is that the card game you were thinking Yeah, the card well. game, that's right. Yeah. Yep, yep. So... That's had a complicated birthing process. Okay. Uh, so we've, we were reasonably happy with where it was at, uh, at the end of last year. Yeah. And then I decided, no, I want to continue to refine it a little more. Okay. And the design we have now, I'm, both Ryan and I are, are, are happy with. And, um, we're, I'm just waiting for the, the next iteration of the prototype to to come in, uh, it's being shipped at the same time as the next iteration of the the conquest prototype, so we can do some additional testing on it. Um, and yeah, it's 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 looking much much better now. I would say um, there was, I, I think, where we were with it before was that it was a little too complicated. Uh, it had a little. It had too many moving parts. It had these different uh, uh, game phases, almost similar to the original Catacombs, for example. Yeah. And we've gotten rid of all that now. It, uh, it it's it's been the, the 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 core game mechanic has always stayed very consistent. It, you know, the core trick taking type mechanic, as Ryan describes it, yeah. is intact. Um, but the way that it's um, the way that it's executed, uh, we we've, we've really just sat there and brought that brought that out now and and really worked on some of the uh, the graphic design elements and it's it's looking it's looking really really sharp now because originally we're happy with it originally you would have you would have a hand of cards but the cards themselves were like double sided so you had you're running with somebody could look at the back of your cat your hand of cards and say it had an indication of potentially what kind of cards that they had and then it was almost like a risk taking exercise if you decided you were going to go up against those cards if I'm remembering correctly yeah that's correct and, and that's still that's part of that core trick taking mechanic that's still there uh-huh. we think that's the innovative part about it so that's in there. that's in there still cool we just we've just brought the focus more onto that as opposed to some of these other phases that we had, we we really managed to get it now to um, uh, to this 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 core experience that we think people are going to enjoy, and that's going to be 
straightforward for them to to pick up and 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 get get going with. Did you find that you were working so close to the game and adding in all of the additional mechanics and functionality that you kind of glad you did you almost like take a step back and then looked at it again or were you not a hundred percent because you sound like the type of person that likes to be a hundred percent before you go ahead with something was there something that was kind of niggling away at you as you were working on it yeah i think that's a good that's a fair assessment i i was i thought that we had the design completed there were a couple of minor issues i had with that design Mm -hmm. but ultimately after some more play testing i thought no let's let's continue to refine this and by the way we'd actually filmed a kickstarter video around it using this original in quotes original design Mm -hmm. already and despite (laughs) despite even filming that kickstarter video Mm. uh I, i said no let's let's continue to uh to to refine it instead yeah, and and it's benefited from that additional development time. So we've we've spent over two years on this title at this point. Have you got a working name for it? Catacombs Monster Pit. Oh, there you go. Because I don't think you probably did have any in the last time, but I don't think you mentioned it the last time. But it used to be called Catacombs Deck Duel. Um, ah, right. Okay. At one point, but now we've gone with Catacombs Monster Pit. Cool. And is. Uh, Quanja, are you going to be doing the art for that as well, then? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he's done the art. Yeah, oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of like tied to the IP. In a lot of ways, yeah. Oh. He is, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. we definitely uh, benefit from having him involved. We certainly appreciate it. Yeah. And what's the kind of the time scale with, um, with that, then? What's the, the time scale with that now? Well, I'd like to potentially be able to do a short Kickstarter campaign for that sometime maybe in early October, something along those lines, if I can. So this is how I really want to get the conquest game going. Yeah. Because I'd like to I'd like to get uh Monster Pit in front of people as well. Uh-huh. Uh you know, because you know you're sort of pulling the curtain back on over two years of work on it. Yeah. So It'd be uh, by the time it gets fulfilled, probably it it may even be three years in development. For example, yeah. because it might, you know, if it was October or November, hypothetically, for example, uh-huh. it might be the the following year in which it was in which it was delivered. So you mentioned obviously the magical word fulfillment. What's your have you got an idea of kind of like fulfillment time skills for conquest? Then, if people, if you when you launch this, because it's going to be. Because it is the first of July. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Have you got an idea of kind of fulfillment time scales for conquest? You sound like you've organised this. You can say, right, we've got this done here. This is all done. This is all done. I think it's just a case in some ways. It's like pressing the button. Once you know how many you've got to do. I mean, if yeah, that's what I'm going for. Yeah, cool. that's right. Okay. Yeah. What yeah, yeah. what kind of fulfillment time are you looking at then, roughly? I would be looking to fulfill it as soon as I could. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'm already doing all the proofing right now. Yeah. Um, so the only other thing that would be required to complete would be any stretch goal content, for example. Mm-hmm. So, um, but the core content, the core player mat, for example, mm-hmm. all of those things. Yeah. I expect to be putting those into production so that they can they can be ready to go. Because I'd like to be able to demonstrate to people that, uh, you know, for the things that are in my control, that we can we can execute and, um, you know, make things happen quickly. Yeah. Now, having said that, I did decide that I'm going to put the fulfillment, supposedly, for Catacombs Conquest all the way next year. I'm going to give myself a nice long runway yeah. just in case there's some other... <laughs> Chaos that happens that I have no control over. So, you know, I can already see it right now. Well, the factory making the rubber mats burns to the ground. I'm not, we're not, um, I'm not laughing at you, but you know, you just, I kind of, 
I'm not, because that don't even... Why, no, no, why? no, but, but, laugh, but laugh about it, because it's almost the curse of catacombs, right? I mean, every time I do this, I mean, like, every time I go to print something with this thing, there's a problem, every single time. I've had a major problem every time I've gone to print something, every single time. There hasn't been one... I mean, we can go all the way back to the original catacombs in 2010, yeah. where we had the wood mold problem. So that was that one. Then what did we have in the next one? So the next printing of catacombs... Um, there was an, I, I know there was an issue there, but we can skip to the third printing where we had, of course, the gray obstacle discs were too small. Yeah. Out of all the possible discs that they could make too small, it'd be the gray <laughs> obstacle discs, of course. So then we had to then send out the correctly sized ones. Yeah. Right? So there was that. Catacombs third edition. I mean, that was, uh, there was the challenges working with that, uh, that one factory and, uh, how they managed to make several, um, pretty fundamental mistakes, and then we have this one with the uh, the wood components. Mm. Yeah, the, the the curse of catacombs is a thing. Um, <laughs> so I, I have to I have to build this into my plans now, right? That there's going to be some kind of you know something or other. Who knows what? I, just, I mean, just, I, I'm kind of curious to see what it's going to be. I mean, just, there's going to be something. Aaron, just breathe. It has to be. Aaron, seems. breathe. Remember the yoga. Breathe. Breathe. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Breathe. You got it. Exactly. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm not going to say, oh, you know, I'm recording that and I'm telling you, I'm, it's going to be fine. And you just, all I'm going to hear probably about in about six, four or five months' time is there'll be a massive scream coming out somewhere from Canada. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something yeah. Of... It's going to keep bu- building up Could've... after all these years, right? Some <laughs> epic scream. <laughs> just gonna be... man goes mad with cardboard. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's I mean, right. you've got discs. I mean, those could be quite. Um, those could probably the potentially create a bruising or at least a couple of scars. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. you know, and you. I'm guessing you'd be pretty deadly at the old flicking, seeing as you've been, you know, probably playing and designing the games anyway. So you know what you're kind of you're kind of doing. What's um. What's next? I mean, have you considered taking up something less stressful, like, say, bear wrestling or something like that? Well, I mean, I guess there are bears in northern Ontario. Um, yeah, so bear wrestling could could happen, I suppose. Well, at least, you know, they're not going to get the wood roll. <laughs> just no, exactly. Just, just That's like right. Straight, yeah. It's just like a straight up, a straight up kind of fight. Just, just a straight up kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> but... Um, in all, in all kind of non-seriousness, now what I mean, uh, have you got plans for the next set of kind of stuff that's going to be coming from the Catacombs IP? Are you looking at something else completely different now as well? Yeah, so we've got some different uh, different ideas that um, that we're working on. Um, the, the 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 big one, if you like, uh, that I am doing some preliminary research on. Um, in terms of a production sense now, as opposed to more of the design sense, is, um, you know, this sort of armies type game. Yeah. I don't really know what it's going to be called ultimately, but uh, this idea that you're going to have a, a larger scale of um, uh, dexterity combat, if you like. Yeah. So um, you can have one side with 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 squads of of characters for example and against your opponent and your it'd be like kind of a two player initially type design where you're moving moving in and uh, with with a squad and uh, attacking and all of that sort of thing so that's uh and with a lot of these sort of die cut type structures so that um you can have like quite a large I mean, I know people say, well, I mean, Catacombs 3rd Edition already takes up a lot of table space, for example. But, yeah, it's a reasonable size. Um, yeah. th- that, that's, never, uh, that's never really stopped me. So this one <laughs> you know, might have like even even bigger, for example. So you'd have the walls that would you could put in different shapes and things like that. Yeah. And then you'd have these die-cut structures with these, these kind of armies. So that's, uh, that's something that I've been thinking about now for a few years. Uh-huh. And it's... Uh, you know, it would be set in the, the catacombs world, if you like, but um, uh, it would not necessarily be directly um, connected with uh, with the, the, the catacombs third edition, catacombs and castles 
um, s systems, if you like, right? Because those are interoperable. Uh, this one would would be a bit a bit uh, different in, in the sense of the way that it that it works. Yeah, no, it'd be like um, one of the it'd be like playing, say, Star Wars X Wing, and then playing Star Wars Destiny or something like that. You're moving between completely kind of different mechanics, even though it's kind of like the same i the same kind of IP. I'm guessing like that. You know? Yeah, well, the scale is different. Yeah. Where, where Catacombs and Castles, for example, focuses on individual champions, individual heroes. Uh -huh. There are some of those uh, individuals that, that would play a role in this uh, this scale, for example, let's say like a commander or something along those lines, um, or medics. Uh, these, for the most part, you're moving entire squads of of characters. So I'd have all my elves, for example. I get to move my my elven unit uh, together. Yeah. I get to move my, um, uh, you know, like uh, say like skeleton squad together. Okay. This this sort of thing. So, just, so yeah, taking it to the next level then. In in a, in a way, yeah. But you're asking about like sort of future plans for yeah. the core catacombs. Titles, if you like. Yeah. Um, well, I think the the one that what I have plans for at the moment is the Towers of Telarive one, which happens in in terms of the narrative uh, after the events in Catacombs and Castles and Keystones and Keeps, mm -hmm. and where they they go and they discover that site that I was referring to earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what happens when they? Um, when they when they explore that those ruins and what do they find there and how does that explain certain things and you know that that that's the the gist of where we would go next and and mechanically there's some ideas that I have in terms of some of these power up cards and things along those lines that you, that would be relevant to both Catacombs and Castles and Catacombs Third Edition. So if you. I guess you you sound like you're kind of opening yourself up to working within the catacombs in castles or catacombs IP, but expanding the type of games that you're wanting to kind of kind of do, kind of bring in the world building at the same time, um, and kind of generally kind of grow the kind of the entire the entire brand altogether. I mean, is that is that the kind of the ongoing plan for just now? I mean, are you? Have you ever sat down with white white pieces of paper and just said, "Now, what would I have? Would you ever consider doing something that wasn't kind of involved in that world, or is this is this you kind of the direction that you're going?" Yeah. So there's some people, uh, designers, that have approached us with some other dexterity oriented games that they would they would like to. Uh, have published, so I'm considering those possibilities as well. Uh, and of course, these wouldn't relate to um, the, the the catacombs IP. Yeah. However, they would still have a dexterity component. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, I would like to do a straight up um, tabletop game with no dexterity components. <laughs> And Ryan's been talking to me about some ideas that 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 he's had in that regard, and I suspect that um, uh, that I'll collaborate uh, with him on that uh, in the future. Right, now okay. that we're wrapping up on the design of the card game, yeah. So we have some some thoughts about uh, what we'd like to see. Um, both of us, for example, uh, you know, we both like Talisman. We don't get to play it very often, but for a, 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 a set it up and, and spend an evening messing around with it, yeah. there's there's some things there that are quite enjoyable. Mm -hmm. The design of Talisman is deliberately open-ended, and in a way, um, that's what invites all of these remarkable possibilities that they've been able to build into it. At the same time, though, that leads to a quite a sprawling, somewhat unfocused experience, especially if you start adding in 
all of the expansions, and of course, Ryan has all of them. So um, I don't even think we've played a game yet with the newest one. Yeah, there was some sort of one where it it changes all the the world or something like that. You get a different map in the center or yeah, something. Yeah. We might have played that once, maybe. Um, but uh, like I said, we don't really get it out all that often. Yeah, it's sort of a tent pole kind of thing in. Um, in, in the year when we actually get to, to sit and do it. But <laughs> yeah. but something along the lines of Talisman, where it's like a, an, an adventuring kind of game, but maybe a bit more focused. Um, that that would be something that I would be uh, interested in, in working on. So He's also talked about some other... He's got a lot of different ideas about what, he, what he'd like to do. And, yeah. um, and so, you know, him and I, we, we, we tend to sort of sit and chat and we you know, what about this? And we've got a good uh, good working relationship that way. So you're looking at towards, it sounds like you're going the kind of the publisher type route as well, kind of letting other people bring the ideas to you and then you'll put it into motion and help them kind of achieve their kind of ideas, it sounds like. Yeah, I think it'll that it'll be a combination of, of different possibilities. Mm-hmm. We're we will work with um, uh, with third party designers. We will always maintain our in house uh, designs as well. And um, as part of that, uh, while Ryan's interested in in working with me on um, some new non dexterity designs, for example, uh, you know, we'll we'll continue to pursue those those two. It sounds like um, the bears are going to have to wait a couple of years before you're going out and wrestling them, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um. Yeah, probably. I mean, you never know. I mean, like I visit Northern Ontario the odd time, so they might just be thrust upon me regardless of whether I'm ready or not. You never know, right? I, mean, I don't know. You know it, uh, I mean, you know, when you're out in the forest, sometimes, you know, like we've got more coyotes, for example, around, so yeah. it might be wrestling wrestling coyotes instead if you had to fight off a bear with a board game and you had the choice of any of the range of the catacombs range that you've done just now which one would you use um you mean in terms of the title or specific mechanics or shots what do you i mean you the actual of? board the box <laughs> which which game is the biggest <laughs> would probably defend you from a bear the best third edition catacombs and castles Probably, probably Catacombs Third Edition or the Wyvern set because they're the same size box. Yeah. You know, I would think he could probably, yeah, there's some cardboard for him to tear through there a bit. That's <laughs> for sure. You know, I'm not. Sure. I don't think it would last all that long. But uh, I don't know. You know Crunch away on some of the wooden pieces for a little bit. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, you know they're bright. They're brightly coloured. Might be inviting for him. You never know, right? Uh, you never know. Who knows? Right? Maybe we have to get Quan Chi to draw a bear now. Maybe that's what we have you to have, have right? To... I don't think we have any bears at this point. Oh, right. Actually, okay. that's not true. We have a brown. We have a brown bear. Um, he's on the he's on the conquest. Uh, he's on the conquest preview page. Where did he did he a go? bear recently. So, and I think in the, um, I think we just call him Bear at this point. I don't think he's. We've sort of assigned a particular region to him or anything at this at this time. He he looks kind of cute though. He's not particularly menacing or anything like that. You have to get that sorted. You have to name him, name him or her, depending because it could be both. Um, well, how about you name him? You can come I'll up with come, a name. I'll come up with it. I'll come up with a name. Go take a look at the name and send me an email, and yeah. you, you can name him. Yeah, and that'll be. I'll, I'll use your name. That'll be cool. Is he the? Is this the pink bear? No, that's something else. What is he? I'm just having a look. He's a, it's a, well, there's, I think he was originally drawn in purple and then we recolored him to brown. All right. So I think there's two different versions of him at this particular point. It might be the brown one that's on the Catacombs Conquest page at the moment. I'm going to have a look. I'm going to have a look and I'm going to bring him out and I'm going to name him. I'm going to email him. And that's 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 how this is going to work. That is how this is. Fine. Works. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, great. Because he needs a name right now. Um, and... You no, know, he'll probably show up as like one of the stretch goal characters or something like that. So, um, you know, expect you to do a good job on this. Come up with a nice, good, solid catacombs-ish name for him. I will absolutely, absolutely. Um, 
if people have listened tonight and said, right, okay, I want to keep in contact with what is happening with Catacombs Conquest, they're looking at Catacombs Monster Pit with a bit of interest, and they're wanting to keep an eye on you in the future for the huge armies, Catacombs Army Conquest Battlefield game. Yeah, whatever we end up calling it. We might get you to name that too, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably end up calling it something daft like Catacombs Gavin. <laughs> something there like, you go. There you go. Um, These things stick sometimes, you know. Sometimes you never do. know, right? They, sometimes they just sometimes stick. I was thinking you could call the bear Claude. C-L-A-U-E-D. <laughs> Claude? Claude. All right. Because <laughs> it's double meaning. Um, you've got the French spelling of Claude, and then you've got Claude as in Claude by a bear. So there you go. That's actually kind of interesting. All right, so we've got Claude the bear. Yeah. Done. Dusted. That's his name. That's it. Boom. That's his na- there's his name. There you Done. go. And you've live. That was easy. <laughs> live on the show as we speak. Live, live on the show, right? This is this is how game design gets done, apparently, right? This is it. it. Just you know, you don't need to spend months doing it. You just come on a podcast and we get all your problems sorted out for you. <laughs> well, I'd already spent months though, right? Trying to name them. I, I, well, I was at it for months. So <laughs> this is this has solved it. We've got a name. We can move you on. You know, all the other ones that we had, like Betsy and oh, Jane and no. uh, Jennifer. <laughs> we've we've we've. We've de- we've decided he's definitively male, so we've put aside the female possibility, unfortunately. Well, it could... But we have cats and things like that, Aww. so the cats, the, the, the women can be re- represented. It could be uh, short for Claudia. The cat side of things. It could be short for Claudia. Yeah, that's actually an interesting possibility. So you know what we can do? Yeah. We can have the brown one be Claude, yeah. and we can take the purple one and make that Claudia. So we'll Boom. do that. There you go. Done. done. Solved. <laughs> Solved. <laughs> we've got it. We've got it uh, both both sides now of the coin uh, represented. Brilliant. Both sides of the bear coin represented. <laughs> but there could be other genders and other ones, and that opens and invites exactly. a whole load of other possibilities. Exactly. You never know, you right? Can't, so, you can't assume. But we've, we've, got, we've, we've handled the low-hanging fruit, at least, right? <laughs> like the, the, the obvious ones we've done. Need to get something else sorted out. I mean, anything else, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have another episode and we'll just work through all of these important design questions. But where can they find you on the internet, Mr. West, if they wanted to find Eldra? What, how do we keep in contact with what you guys are doing and what you guys are up to? Eldra.com. Uh, there's a newsletter that you can sign up for there. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of the online store, mm-hmm. that's under shop.elzra.com. Yep. And there's a separate newsletter on that front for... Uh, products coming back into stock and things of that nature. Yes. Um, and then uh, on Twitter, at Catacombs Game, as, as relates to the, the Catacombs IP specifically, and at Elsra Games as our um, company uh, uh, Twitter handle. Um, I sometimes uh, post some things um, at Aaron West, which is my personal uh, uh, Twitter page. Um, and then, of course, Facebook. Um, same same thing, facebook.com slash catacombs game and facebook.com slash elsewhere games. Yeah. And what we'll do is we'll take all of these links and we shall put them in the show notes so we have notes to show. Um, if you want to keep an eye on what we are getting up to, um, then all you need to do is jump onto Google and search for We're Not Wizards. Um, you will find us on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are now on Pinterest. We are on iTunes or Apple Podcasts is what they call themselves now. Um, we've got a website which is We're Not Wizards. Just We're Not Wizards, Google. You will pretty much find us um, everywhere and anywhere. If you have liked what you've listened to tonight, um, then please go over to um, iTunes and leave us a, or Apple Podcasts and leave us a lovely review. As we say always, um, don't leave us a 10 because that'll make us big-headed and don't leave us a one because that'll make us cry. Um, Give us a five because it's kind of in the middle and it's average. And we are, we're a little bit average, but the one person that's not been average is the rather fantastic, the rather magnificent Mr. Aaron West. Um, Thank you for coming on again, Aaron. As always, it's been an absolute 
pleasure to find out what's happening with the catacombs kind of IP. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure to have been here. Thank you very much uh, uh, for having me, and uh, hopefully um, everyone who's listening has uh, enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, it's something like that. It's always good. And if not, we'll send the bears after you. Yeah, Claude and, <laughs> Claude. and Claudia. <laughs> and they can have a child. Claude, oh boy. Claudette. Claudette, make a note of that as well. Okay, <laughs> all right. It's made, duly noted. There you go, get Quad Chai on the artwork for that. As exactly as possible. Um, no, seriously, thank you for coming on. It's um, as always. It's always oh, my pleasure. Always, always good to to catch up with you and speak to you because uh, we are big fans of the Catacombs Third Edition, and we are looking forward to seeing what happens with Catacombs and Castles when it's here. Um, well, hopefully, when I'm on next, it you know we're not sitting there spending <laughs> you know a significant portion of the show explaining. The very latest disaster. Hopefully, you've actually got it in front of you, uh, and you can actually you. have actually played it and experienced it. I'm going to tell you if you come back on and you're talking about how the neoprene factory burnt down, I will be spending ten minutes laughing. I promise you. Now. Well, yeah, that's that would be fair. That would be <laughs> fair. I mean, at this point, I mean, stranger things have happened. Yeah. I'm almost expecting it. Um, I'm almost <laughs> going to tell the guy, make sure you've got a second factory lined up just in case just the in first case. one is incinerated. Just such a thing, such a thing. Um, and as always, there's only a couple more things to do. The first thing is to remember that we are many things, but we're not wizards. Are we wizards, Aaron? No, definitely not. Definitely not. We are really good with these fingers, so watch yourself. And the second thing is to say goodbye. So it is a goodbye from the amazing Mr. Aaron West. Say goodbye, Aaron. Goodbye, uh, everyone, and uh, happy Canada Day. Happy Canada Day, indeed. And it's a goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe. Roll sixes. I really want to see those fingers, get them exercised because they're going to be needed over the next couple of months. Watch out for bears, but not Claude, Claudia and Claudette, because they could be your friends. But until the right. next time, <laughs> but until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>